Unit 12, 14, 8, Please proceed to 557 Main Street. We have a report of a 55-year-old male in cardiac arrest. You know, medic has been great um, in the military. I've gotten to go to some really cool places. Um, saw some really cool things, saw some not so cool things, but I wouldn't have changed any part of my, my career choice. Each year, we are seeing a dramatic increase in first responder suicides. First responders include firefighters, police officers, EMTs, paramedics, dispatchers, corrections officers, doctors, nurses, border patrol, and so many more. With the growing awareness of post-traumatic stress and trauma-related mental health injuries, why are we still seeing so many suicides? And take the fare away from the organizations that they work for, um, possibly taking away their job, um, taking away their career, their livelihood. I mean, we don't get into this this business for the money, that's for sure. Um, they don't get paid a lot of money for this, um, but we put our heart and soul in it. And you're having those symptoms, the last thing you wanna do is to, is to lose that, that one feeling that you get, which is joy of taking care of people. And knowing that that can be pulled away from you just makes those symptoms even worse because you can't tell anybody. And it's a stigma which is what it's been for years and years. To make sure they all understand that saying we're not okay is not gonna cost you your job. It's not gonna make you ride a desk for the rest of your career. And it's not gonna mean you get shoved in a corner and forgotten about. This isn't just happening in the United States. Suicide rates are increasing among first responders worldwide. What are we missing? together. We need to be able to ourselves feel that there's less shame in asking for help, taking time off from work if that happens, and as partners and co-workers we need to try to be a little bit more understanding, maybe even compassionate. Like we do all that for strangers. We're out there helping strangers uh, with everything we've got. Why can't we just be a little bit more compassionate for our 
fellow brothers and sisters. So that's, that's my answer. How we treat other people on the job. How we compete with each other instead of working with each other. And that's what we need to do better. We need to be better to ourselves. So I climbed up a volcano and I followed a set path. It's a good thing, you don't really get lost because there's only one road up there. And when you've gone ahead and you are willing to tell people that you're not okay, when you've gone ahead and you've done the therapy, it is very easy to look back and find some people to walk along that path. Even if the path's not exactly the same for them, some of those things will work for them and you'll be able to pull them along. It's so easy to go back and help them once you've done it yourself. The hard part is blazing the trail. It's stepping out first and going somewhere that no one else is going. And if no one else is telling you that you're not okay, and you have to recognize it yourself, that's that first step that's really, really hard. National PTSD Conference was held in the nation's capital in Ottawa just last month, and I had the privilege of being able to attend and participate and give some input. There were many experts in the room, um, and now there has to be a report provided to our parliament in December about what, where they're going with all this information so that ultimately responders can get the help that they need and also our military veterans. Basically we took uh, our mental health professionals and we tried to place them strategically in different regions in the country and we put them each in charge of a certain region and what that means is that they have an eye open for the mental health and well-being of our responders in those areas, but particularly uh, when it comes to trauma and resilience. So there's this awareness that people have developed about how they feel, and they know now that trauma exists, it's something worth paying attention to, it's something worth um, dealing with or facing or regulating, uh, asking questions about it and seeing what they can do about it. We've had medics that haven't been in the field or barely have gone on calls because of trauma and we've been able to put them back into action. There's just no feeling like going out to someone who's so desperate and being able to even just hold their hand and make them feel better. A lot of people have said, hey, I think about becoming a medic or should I be a nurse or whatever, and I'll say, go be a nurse. But the reality is I wouldn't change the struggles that I've had and the experiences I've had for anything. Being called to someone at the scene, in their homes, at the hospital, we're having a pretty bad day most times, and you have the privilege of helping them, making them feel better, perhaps having to dull their pain if they need medication, or what about just emotionally, being able to talk to them, hold their hand, who does that anymore, right? And why become a paramedic? Um, because it, it's one of the most fulfilling things a person can do. Sometimes there is ups and downs. Sometimes you do get worse and get better. But in the end, you're definitely going to be higher than you were before, and you're going to be stronger than you were before.